Hey, welcome to DIY Fab Shop. Today I want to show you a quick little 3D printed fixture hack for a manual tube bender. Uh, it's all about trying to make box offsets a little bit easier to do for the beginner slash DIYer. So if the conduit was not made to have a box offset, you'd see that as it enters the box it has this gap. That gap is not great for both fastening the conduit down to the wall or whatever surface and it also uh, puts additional stress on that joint. Uh, so an offset is a pretty important aspect. You can buy an offset fitting but they're kind of expensive and uh, not really needed if you can master the box offset. So a pro who uses a manual bender all the time could probably do these with their eyes closed and if they can't they can purchase a dedicated piece of equipment for a couple hundred dollars that will create that offset jog. So I am a beginner DIYer when it comes to doing conduit and I found that I was struggling a little bit to do something that simple. And so in my mind popped what can I do with 3D printing to make it easier. So I'm going to show you a couple fixtures I made and why I made them and how they work. So the box offset is really two 10 degree bends opposing each other that are distanced at the appropriate distance between the two bends to create this offset. And really when it comes down to making them nice and repeatable it comes down to th three things. The distance between the two bends, the angle of the bends, and the orientation of the two bends need to be in line so that you don't get a dog leg. So when I thought about it from that aspect I said okay what can I do to improve all of those things or make it easier because I haven't done a ton of this and I want to make it easier. Let's jump into the CAD so we can talk about the design of the fixtures. The first one is a scribing fixture and the whole purpose is to be able to mark the location of the bends and provide an orientation for the bends. And so really the, the fixture part is meant to butt up against the end of the tube and then as you come off the end of the tube it spaces back to those diamonds on the top. That first diamond off the top is set back from the end of the tube and is where the first bend will go. So that's where you mark the tube. The second diamond to the left is exactly two inches back from that and is the location for the next bend. And so then because I was putting together this fixture I also said okay I think I can make it a little bit easier to scribe around the tube when you're putting the location of the bend so you can just use this flat surface to use your marker to scribe all the way around the tube. Really the reason for the fixture is to um, put this straight line opposing on either side of the tube along the center of the tube. That little bird's beak you put the pen tip in and you drag it down the tube and you can mark 180 degrees across from each other two straight lines and that helps you control the orientation of the tube. I slide the fixture over the tube, slide it down to the end and then I'm just going to mark the locations of the two bends. Again something I could have done with a tape measure but if I'm going to do it a lot I got this fixture. I'm going to then use the half moon semicircle the end of the fixture to just trace that location so I can mark all sides of the tube. Where the fixture really pays off is this last step which is to create the 280 degrees apart lines along the axis of the tube. Just put the pen in the bird's beak. Now I got to put something on the tube so it doesn't move. Scribe the line. And scribe the line on the other side. 
now I have both my bend marks and the orientation. The other fixture I call the bend control fixture, and it has a radius to it and fits down into the bender. And it has this protrusion that fits into a hole in the bender to hold it in place. It doesn't snap in, it just kind of sets in, but it seems to be enough to hold it in place. And then on the top side, that's where the tube will bend down to when it gets to 10 degrees and bottom out in that surface right there. Without the fixture, you have to visually look to see if the conduit has made it to a line on the side of the bender. And visually, that's just hard to do. You know, when you're going to 90 degrees, I think it's a lot easier. When you're just doing 10 degrees, you're really approximating and you could be off by five degrees and therefore your offset will be off. So this is just making it re repeatable and easy to do. So if we look at the bender, we will see there is a mark for where the bend location goes. And this is that 10 degree mark that I was saying you had to visually try and align to. Here is the hole in the end of the bender that the fixture is going to pop into. And you can see how it aligns with the 10 degree line. Okay, so now I'm going to load the pipe into the bender. And you can see that I place that first mark aligned with the mark on the bender. And then I rotate the pipe conduit to the mark on the end of the bender that shows center. Now I have the orientation controlled and I'm on the bend mark. So I'm going to place it on the floor and just a little bit of finesse here. I'm not trying to squash it. I'm just trying to bring that fixture down in contact with the conduit and get right to that 10 degrees. Now I can move the conduit down to the second bend and spin it 180 degrees and align the other red mark with the center of the bender. And again, finesse, just bringing that fixture down to kiss off the conduit. And we have it. All right, there you go. Nice little box offset. You might not have noticed, but that marker was actually dry erase, so cleans up nicely. I wanted to use something that uh, had some thickness to it for the video. But I think in practice, it's actually kind of practical to have a nice mark versus a, a thin pencil. So uh, again, box offset work great. The 3D fixtures, no, you don't need these. Um, they're just aids. They just make it a little bit easier. You know, the process of kind of designing and fabricating them and working with them made me kind of really appreciate what I was trying to accomplish. I bet you after I do another, you know, 20 of these, I'll probably cast these aside. Um, I don't think I'll be able to do them uh, with my eyes closed, but I bet you I can uh, get the finesse required to, to figure it out with the manual bender. Um, but for a couple 3D printed parts and a manual tube bender, a little bit of time, I was able to figure it out. If you want access to these CAD models, Put it in the comments. I hope you'll hit the like and subscribe button. Share this with somebody that you might think you get something out of it. And thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. I'm Bill Life Back Job.